kitchen area IPM advisor. IPM advisor for the San Joaquin Valley and uh, Pete's going to talk with us about uh, pest management issues. Primarily around chlorophyll. We're glad to glad to see everybody here and I know uh, this is what I'm now calling the annual butts on bail tour. So <laughs> good to see everybody. Uh, can you hear me okay? Okay, good. I can't hear. I can't. It doesn't sound like it's coming out there. So I've got a packet here myself for y'all. And um, I'm not going to cover all this because I've got, I'm short on time. You're going to give me the high sign at 15? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I just kind of want to go through. I'm leaving you with a lot of information that fills in the very, very brief um, presentation I'm going to make today. One of the things Dan asked me to talk about was the, uh, was the, was uh, Lors Band or Clopyrophos and the fact that it came very close to being canceled. Uh, the food tolerances did, but uh, was reversed uh, about the end of March, so it's going to remain available at least for now. Uh, you want, I just want to mention that there was a lot of effort on a lot of people's parts, your industry among them, to make uh, to make uh, a case that that product, that active ingredient, that molecule needs to be uh, kept. One of the things your industry did about three years ago was we had a contract with the Department of Pesticide Regulation to do a critical use analysis from the industry on four crops with alfalfa being one of them. And so some of you, I see Tim here, Tim was uh, very involved in that, as was your former director for CAFA. So uh, for those who did participate, we appreciated it. And uh, what you see in part of that, that packet, I'm going to start with that, hang on one second. I've got the wind. So this is a summary of that of the report we put together. It's a very short summary. Where I want to start with you is you still have the product, but one of the things I just cannot urge you enough to do is now it's sort of a, a double-edged sword in my opinion. There was strong emotion to try and get rid of that particular organophosphate. I don't think it's out of the woods yet. It probably will come back again to try to do some sort of a cancellation or at least many more restrictions. So the good news is we can continue to use it. The other side of the coin is you've got to be good stewards of that product. Use it only when it's critical. Make sure you're using it only when it's needed and in that the place where it works, where it is, it's needed at, at, at the most and works best. And that the labels are followed to the letter and to the period in that sentence. Because, you know, one screw up, and everybody's going to say, see, I told you so. So it's now on to us, it's on to you, to make sure that, uh, that Lors Band and the other products uh, that contain Clopyrophos are really used carefully, efficiently, and safely. I just want to point out, we in alfalfa industry have uh, a really good opportunity to show good stewardship. And if you look at this in your packet, and you can see it from a distance, you'll see a line that has two peaks on it. And that's the use pattern for the pyrophos over a 10 year average. So it's, like, it's the only one of the four crops we saw that had a two, a bimodal use pattern. Spring, winter, spring, and summer. So winter, spring, we're probably talking about people and aphids. And, there's, and we went through the analysis, it's all right here. That's where the real critical use is. That was, and if we did our, when we did our uh, analysis, the um, uh, Savanto wasn't available. So we, the aphid particular was right on the edge. If we didn't have that spear point, we were really gone. So that winter period is when that is a critical use. The summer period, you have alternatives, both chemically and culturally. So seriously, seriously think about when you say, oh, well, I've got, uh, I've got some worms I'm going to treat. There's a good selective product called uh, Corrigin out there that works really well uh, and, and it, would preserve, it would preserve that uh, product right where it's needed. So I'm going to go through some of those things in your packet, but I'm going to do it with a, with a prop. ideal IPM toolbox. What we kept hearing over and over and over from the commodities is Lorsman's an important tool in our toolbox. We need to remain 
have that in our toolbox. We may not use it all the time, but we really need it. Okay, so we got our toolbox here. And what we need in our toolbox, and the first thing we do when people generally think about a toolbox, they say, oh, okay, let's take, bring out the first, the first tier of tools. And they generally are the pesticides. So there's a number of pesticides that are there. Uh, in some cases, I've labeled these by, uh, by uh, mode of action. And one of those is the organophosphates, a 1B. I can't recall if there's any carbamates. But there's, there's, we, have, we have a number of tools in this particular. Not as many tools for alfalfa as we have in a lot of crops. I don't think there are any neonicotinoids, at least four A's that are, that are registered. But you do have a 4C, which is Silvanto for aphid. So you don't even have all of the tools that a lot of people have. So we'll just get rid of some of those tools. But one of the things I really want to emphasize is we all talk about the toolbox and we generally relate it to pesticides. Well, if every problem you see, I'll get that in a second, so we don't get in trouble for spilling uh, pesticides out there. There's another one. Oh and they're not even compatible. We're in trouble now. If, if you see every problem as a nail, you've got one solution, which is a hammer. And what we need to do is to continually look at what are the other alternatives, not only in choosing our insecticide to ensure that we're using the right one in the right place to, to, to do the thing we want, but also to uh, preserve beneficials, to minimize danger to, uh, and risk to, uh, to uh, the environment and people, et cetera. But what's, what, else, you know, what else is in the toolbox besides that? Well, that's everything else. That's <coughs> cultural controls. It's using resistant varieties. It's using biocontrol. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's leaving strips in the field. It's everything we know on how to manage pests besides just the, just the uh, pesticide. That's the integration part. Two things about this toolbox. This tier of trays is all private investment. These are the Sagentas, the Dows, the DuPonts, the Bears, who spend multi, well, hundreds of millions of dollars in developing products that we use in the field. This, which is everything else, is public sector. This is where the research on behavior, on thresholds, on how do you manage it in, a, in, in fostering, which beneficial insects do we try to foster? This is all public sector funded. And that's kind of the way it is right now in Alpha. Not only have our tools, because remember, if you've got a tool, over and over again in your toolbox, you're eventually it's going to get dull. You've got to fix it, find a new one, or maybe there's a better tool out there. It's the same thing with IPM tools, is that some of them, for alfalfa for an example, we really haven't had any original research in any kind of way in terms of a very, very focused uh, insect pest management approach for nearly 25 years now. Since Charlie Summers did a lot of his work, we started to build up on this again. Uh, Larry Godfrey had a had a has a proposal in um, uh, to look at weevil for the first time in almost that many years. I mean, everything else in life, 30 years, has changed immensely, and yet we're still using the same information we had 30 years ago with varieties, watering techniques, and everything else. So the question is, is how do we get that filled back in at some point? Because your toolbox with the pesticide for the insecticides is already somewhat limited because it's difficult with a lot of insecticides to get the food tolerance through the dairy to the milk. So a lot of them, the other problem is you've got a blooming crop which begins to really impact pollinator uh, um, uh, restrictions. And the size of the crop, the value of the crop for somebody to invest in and try to I think there's always going to be somewhat more of a narrow selection. And I just really, really want to say that I've worked as an IPM advisor for 36 years. I've been in field crop that entire time. I've got less than 45 days left. And this crop has been the poster child. Oh, that's a strong wind. There we go. And we'll just do this. How's it? Good. Um, this is the poster child for IPM. Because it is a good reservoir for a lot of insects.
insects and wildlife. There's always one guy eating another guy out there. It has a higher tolerance for most pests because it isn't a an apple with a bite that destroys the apple. You can you can allow a problem to you can detect it, it builds, you take care of it. And you have because you have multiple harvests on it, you can you can intervene with a number of different kinds of practical uh, uh, cultural practices. So I really think if we're going to do IPM anywhere, and we have to sort of begin to expand a lot beyond just a, just just hoping that. Uh, that they don't take another product from us or another AI from us is we need to go back and remember just how resilient this crop is to insects and how we can manage those insects with I think a minimum of uh, uh, of at least broad spectrum pesticides. Huh? Is that my time? That's pretty good, Dan. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's up. I, I'm, I'm pretty well finished. Okay. Get close. I think that's I good. Got, I, you got another point to make? Yeah, one, one, that, that thing, because I got off on my soapbox, now I need to get back on track. One of the things I left in there was there are three pieces about the decision support tool. I urge you to really take a close look. That was a product that came out of this project, and it allows you to go through and look at a spectrum of insect pests that were critical, had critical use for clopyrifos, but it's also good with all the other products. And it takes you through, if you select three pests, I have summer pests, pest there. It goes through a slate of them, looks at all the pest management guidelines, lays out cultural, biological, and chemical, and the chemical lists the, uh, the, the impact on beneficials. You have water toxicity you can look up. It's, it's, a complete, it's a complete package there that when you print it out or save it on your smart device, you can go back immediately to where that information came from. This gives you an excellent plan because toolboxes are only useful if you know what you're going to do with them. You don't start tearing out a bearing wall before you have a plan of what you're going to do. It's the same thing with IPM. Figure it out for the year. Go back and learn. The, what I meant by the ideal toolkit was it's an acronym for me. Ideal. I, identify your pest. D, determine its population. E, evaluate uh, the risk of the crop. D, not that D. A, assess all your options. And L is to learn what you did this year, what can you change for next year. I still believe, and I believe things are changing a lot around right now, and I think you're going to have to look more to yourselves. When I retire, and Eric Natrick retires, there will be no field crop entomologist working in the San Joaquin and Imperial Valley, San Joaquin and Central. And by that I mean a dedicated entomologist to field row crops. We have people who have entomology, like Rachel does an excellent job, but her assignment is an agronomy in these counties. So, just an FYI, this information I'm giving you is more of a life preserver than anything else. Because there's going to be fewer of us around, and nothing's going to happen for many of these positions. We have a call again in spring 2018, and you can wait a couple of years if any positions are approved. Because we put in for a lot of positions, and nothing was funded. So, that's my final pitch, as I mean. <laughs> Thank you. Woohoo! Um,